Yo, what up? This is LL Cool J. Hey, y'all. This is Alicia Keys. Your variety hits. This, 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 this is 87.1 Caroline Radio. You are listening to 87.1 Caroline Radio. KCGN Bakersfield, your home for all your variety hits, just like the Aaron's Opinion Podcast. Welcome back, listeners from around the world. Or how are you doing? I'm doing okay this evening, and I'm really looking forward to tonight's episode of Aaron's Opinion because we're joined by someone from Scotland. <clears throat> I have never had a guest from Scotland before, and I'm so glad you came. His name is Connor Johnston. Connor, welcome to Aaron's Opinion. Um, I saw a lot of videos that you've posted to YouTube, so why don't you get into it by telling our guests a little bit about who you are, why you got into YouTube, and what you would like the world to know about you. Go right ahead, and I'll interject as we walk through. Okay, so as you've said, my name is Connor. I am from Scotland. I am 27 years old, and I live with low vision. Um, I was born three months premature, um, which then led to me having ROP, um, retinopathy or prematurity. Um, yeah, so then when I was about the age of three, four, um, maybe five, when I started school, um, the kind of teachers kind of... Uh, recognised that I was kind of struggling to see the, the kind of like blackboard, whiteboard. And um, so that kind of led to me to go on to, like, see an optician. And I was then told that I am severely myopic um, and also have astigmatism. Um, so I started, obviously, like, to wear glasses and all that kind of stuff. Um and over the kind of the last well, 20 odd years of my life, you know, when my eyesight has gradually like, got worse and worse to the point now where I am obviously like visually impaired, you know, um, which does kind of obviously, it's, it's, not, it's not great, you know, but I still get about and I can still like manage my day to day life and whatever, but I shall go into more detail shortly. Um, but yeah, that's just a kind of wee bit about my conditions as well. And um, yeah, just a wee kind of bit about me. All right. Well, l- listeners, for you at home, uh, you you may already know this information, but it never hurts, hurts for me to repeat this in case you're a new listener on Caroline Radio, that my name's Aaron Richmond. I'm sending the, sending you this episode from an undisclosed location in the world. Um, and basically, yeah, my story is that I'm blind, like you, Connor. And I was born blind uh, with glaucoma. Um, and my day job is I'm a teacher. I work for Company X, is what I call it. Uh, and basically, I teach English as a second language online. And when I'm not doing that... I'm a podcaster and now basically on this radio station. And I do this uh, to educate the world about the critical issues in the blindness community because I feel that there, there are many great podcasts for blind people, but I, I have felt over the years that some of those podcasts are simply not approachable, you know? And, mm-hmm. and, and this, is, this is my opinion, that in my opinion, a lot of the podcasts around the community and around the world are not are, are not really sending me as a listener a friendly vibe, a vibe mm-hmm. of kindness, understanding, and education, where you can just walk up to Aaron's opinion and say, hey, Aaron, can I come over to your show tonight and have a conversation? Yeah. And, and 99% of the time, I'm going to say yes, of course you can, because I want the world to hear as many interesting stories from all over the world as possible. So... Um, you know, um, what were some, uh, interesting things or some, some things that happened to you while you were growing up, maybe as a teenager and getting into the age of uni and things like that, that, uh, would maybe be interesting to blind people or blind listeners or that my blind audience would be able to relate to. What do, what do you think about that? Okay. Yeah. So Mm-hmm. Growing up at school and all that kind of stuff, as I mentioned, like it was really difficult for me to like see the boards. 
So I had to sit right at the front of the class right. so that I could like be able to see the writing on the board, you know, which Good. wasn't like not great, you know, but it was what it was and whatever. And also going through school because I also do wear glasses, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, due to the myopia and astigmatism kind of thing. Um, but I have a really high prescription. You know, I'm like a minus, minus 13 and a minus 10. No, um, no, did you, no, no, Connor, did you say that you have a very specific prescription for your glasses? Is that it? Yes, I do. Okay, uh-huh. yep. okay yeah, me, me too. Me too, man, because I, I wear bifocals. Um, it, it's it's a bit of an interesting story with my eyes too. My eyes, um, I've had seven different cornea transplants. All of them were done when I was a, a infant or a small child. And now I am 28 years old. They were done in the 90s. Um, and now my basically my corneas are really too thin to be operated on, which is why I take perfect care uh, of of my eyes, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, certain certain glasses and certain prescriptions for lenses can be very strange, yep. um, especially too with the technology. How the technology for fiber optics and glasses and, and um, optometry has yep. really improved in in our lives. Yeah, um, yep. and so so by the way, for our for our American listeners. Um, you you have a beautiful accent, by the way. I love hearing I love hearing Scottish people. Oh, I love hearing I love hearing <laughs> Scottish people talk. Love that I love that. It's, it's such a beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful English. Um, so, but some of our American listeners have never been to the UK. Yeah. So let me just tell you that what what he said was that, was that when when he was when Connor was growing up, he had a difficulty in seeing the chalkboard at his school and the teachers noticed that. Okay. Because my friend, not, not everybody is, is um, accustomed to that, yeah. be- to that beautiful way that you, the, the, the Scottish English. I love that accent. Love it. It's a really cool way to talk, but a lot of people, mm-hmm. um, anyway, that is, that is good. That is good. So, um, all right. Well then, so then you graduated from high school and you know, then, uh then then what happened did you uh what did you study in in uni and how did you go about you know managing that um well after i left school um i went to college Mm. and i studied administration good um but again that had a kind of that had quite a lot of challenges as well due to my low vision and using the computer you know it was quite difficult like to see the mouse on the screen um Sometimes it was quite difficult to just like use the computer, you know. Um, mm. Now, and you know, and Connor, what what, what year uh, was this going on where you were having these difficulties? This was in two thousand and nine. Um, so it's about ten, eleven years ago. Yeah, because you know, I'm on my iMac right now recording this episode for you, and mm. I found that the Apple technology. I found uh, that the Apple technology has greatly improved over the years uh, Mm -hmm. to a point where I'm able to basically do my work, do my podcast with almost, you know, almost uh, no, no true, not a lot of difficulty. But I do recall that back in 2009, technology was not, certainly not what it is today. No. And also, um, yeah, yeah. Also for me, um, I use uh, Windows, mm-hmm. and I have to have it in like a high contrast, you know, um, to be able to see um, the actual screen. Okay, right. Um, otherwise, I just I won't be able to see see anything on the screen. It has to be on that black background with the white text. Mm, got you, got you. So you need to use. Um a really good contrast between uh-huh. black. Yeah. You know, it, it's it, Connor, you, you, you'll understand this because you're blind like me, but a lot of sighted people think it's really weird when I say this. <clears throat> I have vision. I'm able to see things, but I also don't worry about it. Like, 
let, let, let me give you an example of something I, I always find to be, I always think it's the strangest thing. At the hospital in my country, wherever that is, where I go to, there is a room in the hospital or an office, really, called a low vision center. And at this low vision center, you can learn about technology and magnifiers and all these things that can, you know, sub that can help people to see better. Mm -hmm. And I always ask, you know, my parents, I always ask them, well, w what's the point? You know, if you're already blind, right, and we, we can't see, there's nothing wrong with being blind. So why, why have they invented all this extra technology to try to help blind people to, 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 to see things better? I don't know. I always think it's, I always think it's kind of a waste of time, you know, but I mean, when, when I'm as a blind person, I just don't care about that type of thing. It's of no, it, it just doesn't hold my interest at all. But do you, do, do you have any opinions about that? Well, yeah, because although it might not matter to you, obviously people out there who are visually impaired um, want to see better, you know, so mm. um, those aids and technology and that that can help you see that wee bit better you know it's obviously useful to them because cause I, I can understand myself like I would love to be able to to see better you know and if I had access to those sort of like tools and like magnifiers or whatever then that obviously helps you see that wee bit better you know um hmm. Cool, cool. So I guess other blind people in the, I don't know, this would be a good question for you at home. Do you like to use magnifiers to see things better if you cannot see them well enough? I don't know. Me, I I just, I don't know. I just don't spend the energy with it. But I, No, I, I guess, I'm the same. No, I, I don't actually use anything like that myself. Um, right, right, right. I don't know. To me, it's, to me, it's kind of too much trouble when I'm already blind. And yeah. already used to being blind, you yeah. know. It's but I I guess though for people who are recently uh, recently maybe someone who became blind as an older adult, Connor. I did an episode a few weeks ago, and I I don't know if you've been following our show, but I did an episode a few weeks ago where I spoke with a retired correctional officer who worked in a prison in my country. Mm -hmm. That was quite an episode, and he was he's an adult who lost his vision later on in life, and he was telling us how difficult that is and that it is really unimaginably challenging to become blind as an older adult it's really really bizarre for people yeah. so yeah well okay so back to administration you were st you studied administration had some difficulties and then what um yeah so after i graduated from college um i left with a in a higher diploma which is um what does that mean a higher diploma, it's, um, how can I explain it to you? It's quite an advanced level of education, you know. Um, don't really know how else to describe it to you, but it is quite a high level of um, qualification. Mm -hmm. um, so after I left college, I tried to obviously like gain, gain employment, like, doing admin, ad, admin roles, all that kind of stuff. But um, that never really, really came to very much. Um, so then I kind of went into kind of social care background, um, you know, like helping others and that. And I now work um, for people that are blind. Um, ironically, I support people that are, Profoundly blind, um, one hundred percent blind. Um, you know, so it's it is good because obviously I can I can empathise with them, you know, to some degree because I have issues my own, like of of my own. Um, so yeah, it kind of led to a totally different career path, but um, it's really good. Well, that's really that's really cool. That's great. Yeah, I mean, for me, I studied international relations at my university, whatever that might be. I did live in the UK for three months, by the way. I lived in England, mm. um, and I lived at the University of East Anglia. It's a, just a wonderful place. 
Wonderful place to study. Wonderful place to be. Mm-hmm. Have you have you?